This game sucks. I hate handhelds. I gave this 84 tries. None of them worked. It sucks. 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 But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe this is a hated gem. So Link's Awakening was a game I was always aware of because it was constantly number one on the power charts in Nintendo Power. It literally, every month, like clockwork, it was there. And it went on for years, two years, three years, four years. I think it got up to six years where this game is number one on the charts. Now, I never picked it up because I was not a big handheld guy. I never liked playing it on a Game Boy. There was no backlighting. I couldn't see. I never, I had a console. Why would I play it on a Game Boy when I could play it on the console? Um, I probably should have got a Super Game Boy, which is ironically what I used to play this time. But anyways, I finally, when this, the Game Boy Advance came out, I picked up the Zelda DX version, which was in color. And I figured, well, you know, might as well get that one. And stupid me, I didn't realize the Super, uh, the Game Boy Advance wasn't backlit as well. So I tried playing it, I tried playing it so many times between, God, two, year, 2000 and maybe even as recent as 2010. Like, I tried to play this game so many times, I just couldn't. The same thing kind of happened with Oracle of Ages. I, the, the handheld killed me. And I just, I didn't get into it. And I, I, I don't know why, I don't know why, but I'm, you know, I got the Super Game Boy, I went to play it again, and wow, am I glad I did. So, clearly, this game is Zelda 4. I, I know, yeah, duh, but if you look at the timeline, at the way Zeldas play, before this game, we'd had 1, 2, and 3, Link to the Past. This game came out about two years after Link to the Past, and it's very heavily influenced. As many people know, it's actually a dream continuation of Link to the Past, somewhat, depending on how you interpret it. And it has a lot of the same style, but it also has a lot of beginnings in it, of what would eventually transpire in Ocarina of Time, and then so on and so forth. And what I mean by that is this is the first game to introduce some other kind of tertiary characters that are important besides Zelda, Link, and Ganon. You have Marin and Terran, which in Ocarina of Time are going to be in charge of Lon Lon Ranch. Well, they're in this game. I mean, one of them clearly is Mario, but they're in this game. You also have fetch quests being integral to the story. Now in Zelda 3, you could get the fourth bottle, you could get the upgraded swords all the way, but the only thing that really mattered was getting the silver arrows. All the other stuff was kind of there, but you didn't necessarily need it to beat the game. Not so in this one. In this game, there's a huge fetch quest that transpires between 15 people, I think, and uh, two times you actually need it to progress the game. You have to give a monkey some bananas, and then you have to get the uh you have to get the magnifying glass from the mermaid's uh neck blah 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 there are semi dungeons there are areas you'll go fight a mini boss get an item get a key and then you'll go to the temple which this game calls them levels which drives me nuts but at least one of the zeldas calls it levels so that i don't rail on people for saying that okay fine i call them palaces temples dungeons whatever levels it sounds lame so this is the game that brought about that it brought about fetch quests, and it brought about extra characters that led to stupid people like Tingle. So stuff like that, I just can't forgive. But that being said, it's a very good playing Zelda game. You have all the nice additions that, uh, that Link to the Past brought. You got the hook shot again. You have um, a bunch of other things that are good. But one of the things is it has more handhelding in it. There's a lot of hand-holding when you run into stuff, it'll tell you, oh, this pot is too heavy. Maybe if I had something heavy to lift it up. And it tells you that every damn time if you're not equipped with the power bracelet. And seeing as how this is a Game Boy game and you can only have two things equipped, one of which is your sword, by the way. So you're a constant, sometimes you have no sword, it gets really tedious when you're walking like, oh damn, I hit this, oh damn, I hit this, oh god. 
They also added cool power-ups in the game. Which uh, lasts for a certain amount of time if you leave a zone or if you get damaged. But every time you get it, once again, it explains, Oh my god, here's what you got, here's what you got. It got to the point where I started avoiding them. It's not like it's the, that hard of a game, so you didn't really need them. Anyway, starting the game, you're in some magical land, you have no idea where you are, you wash up on the beach, you have nothing on, no shield, no hammer, no sword, no what. Uh, you find the Lon Lon Ranch people, which one of them obviously is Mario, which that was another thing that rubbed me the wrong way when I played this back in the day, is that there's so much Mushroom Kingdom influence. I mean, the second screen of the game practically had you seeing a chain chomp which that just didn't make sense to me. I, I didn't understand why why on earth are there chain chomps? Why are there Goombas in the side-scrolling areas? Why are there, you know, it's, it's literally, there's Mario everywhere in this game. They even have the boss from the end of Mario 2 as a guy who gives you a song that you need to get, speaking of, uh, speaking of side quests, which another thing, it costs 300 rupees to get, and you don't get rupees in increments of, you know, one... 520 you either get one rupee or you find chests that have 50 200 100 rupees in them And one of the funny things is when you get the chain chomp which this happened to me when I played the game the first time or whenever I was playing it I just lost interest because I don't know. I it just it just felt too weird You have to keep switching between your two things you have a jump which is link never jumps and then you're getting a a freaking chain chomp following you to go to the second temple like it just went a little too early and I remember getting the stuff and gave the gator the dog food and then I figured when he gave me bananas that monkey throwing uh, coconuts was gonna be the one I give the bananas to and then the chain chomp promptly eats him and I, I just I think I, I may even quit the game when I was a kid and be like oh no that screw this game I'm tired of it so I had the same feeling I had the same feeling of not liking the game as I did back then, and it felt so familiar that I have to believe it was the exact same thing. And had I not had to beat this game for the review, I probably would have quit again there. So, what it comes down to is this a hated or a gem? I think because it set up so many tropes that while are not annoying in this game, will be in later games, because of the hand holding, the just kind of weirdness of the whole game. <laughs> I mean, it was nice to see some of the things that I've seen in other games used in this. For instance, uh, one of the mazes is actually directly ripped off in Marvelous and Other Treasure Island. Some of the abilities are used in that too, uh, when it's you have the jumping boots and you have all that. So that was really cool to see. I don't hate it. It's an excellent game. This is Zelda 4 through and through. It's just like Link to the Past. Excellent gameplay, excellent level design, completely able to be done without a guide. Very well put together, excellent game, but just kind of, I guess, I guess I'm looking at the legacy of it and I can't forgive what it's about to do to the series. So that's probably why I'm still going to call it a hated gem. It gave me the feeling of why am I, well, I don't like this, why is it doing this, that I just couldn't shake. And as much as I loved it, I love this game. Don't get me wrong, this is an excellent game. I'm so happy to have finally beaten it. I can't believe it took me this long. Especially looking at just the, the save file I started in 2000 whenever it has 84 or 85 attempts and just being like wow if only I had if only I'd beaten this sooner just so I could know because that's kind of the reason why I wanted to do this is just so I can finally know what it's like and yeah great game pick it up if you don't have it it's still pretty cheap uh, DX version or the normal one doesn't matter but yeah hate a gem take it to the bank.